How's it going guys, it's Nate here, and Skyrim's a pretty big game. It was in development for around 4 years and features a massive open world, filled with characters and stories to tell. And amongst all that, after well over half a decade, there's still a few tiny details littered throughout the game that continue to catch me and many others off guard. So today we take a look at 10 more hidden details that you may have missed in Skyrim. Starting off, the Forsworn Briarhearts are some of the game's more mysterious opponents, and represent some of their faction's strangest rituals. They appear almost half dead, and have cut out their normal hearts, replacing them with exposed Briarheart flowers. Well, should you manage to sneak up on one of these zombie-like barbarians, you can actually pickpocket their artificial hearts from them. Doing so will kill them instantly and spark no attention to the player. As a countermeasure to this though, Forsworn Briarhearts have ridiculously high sneak detection skills, so getting the jump on one may be difficult, but is definitely worth trying. And number two, if you head east of Whiterun, you may stumble upon the bandit cave White River Watch. For the most part, it's everything that you would expect from your standard dungeon. However, at the cave's entrance, you may be called upon by Ulfur the Blind, who's sitting in a chair, and due to his obvious condition, doesn't know who you are, and will mistake you for being a fellow bandit who goes by the name of Roldolf. You can either play along or just kill him on the spot right there. But if this isn't unconventional enough, Ulfur will also have a blue book next to him, titled Ulfur's Book. Open it up, and you'll find that its pages are entirely blank. But it doesn't end there. The first bandit you kill in the area will have a note on him, titled Note to Roldolf, from the camp's leader, that demands Roldolf respect Ulfur and stop playing pranks on him. It's kind of funny. When you think of a bandit leader, you generally think of someone who's merciless and only wants the best. But this one has a rather soft spot in his heart for this elderly man. Next, the Museum of the Mythic Dawn and Dawnstar has some of the weirdest and most trivial artifacts on display. One of them is an ancient Mythic Dawn text that doesn't doesn't seem like much on the outside, but unlock the display case it's in and start to attack it, yes I understand that sounds weird attacking a piece of paper, but do so and it will magically transform into a wooden bucket. I have no idea how this makes any sense, perhaps it's a glitch, though I don't understand how any developer could accidentally make something like this happen, so I have to assume this was intended by Bethesda, I just don't know why. While we're still in Dawnstar, at number 4, every time a resident of the town is killed, a red mountain flower will spawn at the White Hall in their memory. It's not all that strange, considering that the game will often send you inheritance money when certain NPCs you help die. And there was even a cut feature that would allow for ghosts to spawn in. But it's still cool that Bethesda went through this effort to add such a detail for a single city. Our number 5 spot will not only possibly get this video demonetized, but also takes place on the shores of Solstheim, the Hawaii of Tamriel, only colder and much less touristy. On the northern edges of the island, head into the ancient Nordic cave Ben Kongergeik. I think I said that the right way. Fight your way through dozens of Reikling occupiers, and towards the end of it all, there will be a tucked away, isolated tent, filled with books. Take a closer look, however, and you'll learn that all of these books except for one is actually just another copy of the lusty Argonian maid. If that's not inappropriate enough, next to the pile are rafts of linen and bowls. Oh, but it gets even more blatant. The only book that isn't an erotic Argonian fiction is a telekinesis spellbook. Oh boy, did the level designers for this one really want to paint us a picture here. Well, we're on the topic of Frozen Lands dominated by Eskimos, at number 6, in mainland Skyrim's most northern region, west of the Dwarven ruin Sarthal, there will lie a variety of ancient mammoth fossils, but one of them will stick out in particular, as one mammoth can be found dead, half frozen in the ice, but his corpse preserved. Also interesting about this one is that it's also been peppered with Dwarven arrows and bolts. Considering the corpse's close proximity to Dwarven ruins, this mammoth was likely killed by the civilization thousands of years ago, before they all vanished. I find it a bit concerning that this mammoth is standing up, but nonetheless, a nice little detail by Bethesda. Moving on to number 7, if you go just west of Cradlestone Tower near the cliff sides of the Reach, you're likely to come across a small troll cave, with two of the creatures guarding it. Take them out, and among the bones of unlucky travelers and deer lies the corpse of the ironically named Frofnir Trollsbane. With a name like that, this character was likely a very proud troll hunter. He even carries, or carried, a unique warhammer that does 15 points of extra damage specifically to trolls. Alas, he must have gotten too cocky when approaching this den. Perhaps he didn't expect two trolls to be inhabiting it, or maybe just woke up on the wrong side of the bed. Regardless, the tables turned on Frofnir, and the troll hunter became the prey. Next at 8, Skyrim makes multiple Lord of the Rings references with its dialogue. During the Night to Remember quest, the Hagraven you propose to, whom you will have to visit and demand the ring back from, will often say, my precious, as you battle to recover the jewelry from her. Also, following the Battle of Whiterun, depending on which side you fought for, either Hadvar or Rayloth, when approached, will say, I'm pretty sure I killed more than you. 
I was counting. This is a reference to Legolas and Gimli's competition in the films, which I would show you, but I can't because I like not getting copyright strikes. Getting close to the end here, our number 9 spot takes you to the dwarven ruins of Blackreach. Inside there's a building called War Quarters, where you can find a room with 7 small beds surrounding a lantern. Nearby is a separate room that contains a full-size bed. This, of course, is an allusion to Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. The Dwarmer themselves are actually quite small folks, who would have no use for a full-sized bed, so if this wasn't an intentional reference by Bethesda, they would be breaking their own lore in a way, which they would NEVER do! Finally, last on this list, concerns a vendor in Markarth. His name is Banning, and he actually sells war dogs. These dogs are particularly strong. They have more health and do more damage than any other canines in the game. He claims his secret is the spiced beef that he feeds them. Okay, fair enough. However, during the quest, The Taste of Death, Banning can actually be found sitting amongst other cannibals. When approached, he will reveal that it's not exactly spiced beef that he's been feeding his dogs. This was an awkward revelation for me, considering that I had always liked to use his war dogs for their stat buffs over other ones, but now I just feel like I need a shower. And there you go, 10 more tiny details in Skyrim that you may have missed. This is our third episode in this little mini-series. I didn't expect it to go on this long, but we've covered 30 things so far, so hopefully I was still able to bring up a few that you didn't already know about. If so, like ratings are always very much appreciated, and what have you noticed throughout your travels in Skyrim that you think others might not have caught? Leave a comment down below. Again, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you all in my next video. Peace out, everybody.